Rx Television on RxMuscle.com. This is Ask Dave, better known as Hashtag Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit SpeciesNutrition.com. I'm your host, Sadiq Faruqi. This is your 30-minute question and answer show with Dave Palumbo. All your questions on diet, training, supplementation, IFBB pros, competitions, right now on RxMuscle.com and the Rx Muscle YouTube channel. A loaded, loaded menu of shows. Yesterday, we uploaded the first part of the Big Lenny interview as well as a teaser clip of the police interrupting said interview. Then later in the evening, we posted an episode of Iron Rage. It had uh, IAB Pro Jeff Long, Lee Priest, and they talked about uh, the GoFundMe, abuse of GoFundMe accounts. Uh, and then, of course, of course, we have this show up on rxmuscle.com. Let's go to Dave Palumbo in our Cape Coral Studios. Dave, we've been promising this for quite some time. Now we are finally launching offers, exclusive offers on specnutrition.com for our Ask Dave viewers. Yeah, everyone has been asking me. A lot of people said, hey, Dave, how can we get some uh, discounts on uh, the Species Nutrition product? You know, I hear you talk about them a lot on Ask Dave, and I really want to try them. So we're offering a special uh, today. Uh, if you use the code AD for Ask, D Ask Dave, AD25, you'll get 25% off the entire SpeciesNutrition.com website. And this is a very short-term offer. So guys, uh, take advantage of it, you know, while it lasts for the next, what is it, for two days we're doing it through? It, it's through Sunday night, 11.59 oh, okay. p.m. There it is up on the screen. I should have read the screen. Uh, yeah, so uh, once again, we're just doing it for our viewers. So if you guys are watching and you want to buy some stuff and try it out, uh, now is your opportunity to do it. And I want to just say, Sid, I'm still in shell shock from the uh, Big Lenny interview that I did the other day. Uh, he came out here, you know, and with Andrew and, and I forget the other guy's name. And, uh, you know, we had a great time. And, you know, he, I don't even know if I should tell what happened, but basically Lenny went to the wrong house. He went to the neighbor's house. And, and I don't really talk to many of the neighbors just purposes. I never want any problems with them. And this one particular neighbor, for some reason, doesn't like me. And he's he's an he's he's probably just an asshole in general to everyone. And he uh, he thought I don't know what he thought. He thought maybe I sent Big Lenny over there to beat him up or something like that. And we did, halfway through the Lenny interview, and all of a sudden the cops show up at my house, like like three cars, you know, with like three different officers. And I'm like, what the hell? My wife's like, the cops are here. I'm like, I can't even believe this. Uh, if it was back in the day, I might be a little nervous because I might have thought, well, you know, I got some stuff I don't I, I don't want in the house, but. Uh, nowadays, I was just laughing him because I'm like, I, I couldn't even, I, I knew it had to be due to the neighbor somehow. Uh, he, he reported that three drunken soldiers were, you know, three drunken guys were on his property or something like that. And as if like I sent them over there. So we, we recorded the whole thing. It, it's pretty funny. And uh, uh, the, the Lenny interview went so long that I actually broke it into two parts because it was so good. And uh, that the perfect halfway mark is when the cops came. So, so I'm sure everyone will get a kick out of watching it. I know part one is up now. I don't know if part, part two will probably be up right after this show airs. So guys, enjoy it. You asked for it. I gave it to you. So again, the episode of Live with Big Lenny right now available, part one at least, on rxmuscle.com. Also, the AD25 promo code Live now at SpeciesNutrition.com. It's going to be good through Sunday night. I believe that's February 4th, 11.59 p.m. So if you want to try Amino Evolved, uh, Testalize back in stock, or any of our health optimizers, muscle builders, Isolize, high ECO whey protein to the market, take advantage now, AD25 at SpeciesNutrition.com. Let's go to your question. If you want to join us, you can join us in the Muscle Central Forum on RxMuscle.com on our official Instagram page, Facebook page, or tweeting at us using hashtag AskDave. First, we go to Francesco, Men, Dave, and Sid. Nowadays, what do you think is the best way for an athlete or a coach to promote themselves on social media? You know, I always tell people, you know, the best way to start, you know, letting people know you're coaching people is to coach someone, you know. Uh, when I teach my Secrets to Becoming a Diet Guru course, um, which is, by the way, the next one is February 24th, so... Uh, the class, I think we have four spots left. So guys, you got to sign up at DavePalumbo.com. Don't wait if you want to come out here and learn how to be a diet coach, learn er everything about nutrition, supplementation, performance enhancing drugs, uh, how to write diets, off season pre-contest, you know, detoxification site, injection oils. I go over everything, you know. So if you, once again, you know, one of the th questions people always ask me 
during this course is, you know, how do I how do I start doing this and, and making money from it? And I said, well, you know what you should do? Go out and coach people for free. Don't charge anyone. Find a couple guys that are that, that maybe don't have money and that you think have good potential and, and get them in shape and put the before and picture after pictures up. If you coach someone for free, the person you coach is definitely gonna let you use the pictures. And that's your proof. And then and, and when people start seeing how good these guys look, you know, they're gonna say, hey, you know, what do you charge? You know, and, and then that's how you start. And once again, it's gonna be slow at first, but but it builds, you know. So don't get discouraged, you know, if if you don't become the top coach in, in six months. It doesn't happen like that. Um, but if you get a, a year or two under your belt and you have some good, you know, good results with your clients, and they don't have to be people winning nationals and getting pro cards. I'm talking about, you know, the housewife who just, you know, had a baby and, and wants to lose, you know, 30, 40 pounds. Get her in shape. She'll tell, you know, 20 of her friends about that. So you got to start coaching people. That's the key. But you also have to have knowledge. And that's why it's important, you know, and you don't have to take my course, but obviously my course is a one day, you know, four years of college in, in one day, essentially. And you're going to leave with a lot of knowledge. But once again, you have to put that knowledge to use and, and practice. Let's go to Miguel Lito Hudson. Is there a reason why people get sick with certain esters in regards to testosterone? Like I've heard people being fine on sipionate but getting flu symptoms on sustenate. Well, the problem with sustenate is, is the propionate ester. Test propionate causes some people to have some kind of an allergic reaction. I have, can't take propionate. I tried over the years and wherever it was put in my body, whether it be, now in sustenon form, it's a very small amount, so sometimes you can get away with that, it won't be that bad, but straight propionate shots, what they'll do is they irritate the tissue there and you get severe swelling, uh, it, it activates the immune system, the immune system will go after that and you, you can get like these fevers and, and flu-like symptoms. You know, usually two Tylenol will, will negate that, but who the hell wants to feel that way? So I always tell people, if you have a sensitivity to test propionate, don't take test propionate products. There's plenty of other, you can use testosterone cypionate, you can use testosterone enanthate, and get the same results because testosterone is testosterone. There's no reason to suffer if you don't feel good taking those shots just because you think that's what you gotta use. That's not true. Um, like I said, all testosterone is the same. Some people just have very uh, bad sensitivities to the propionate ester. Rob James, what is your best course of action with someone who is suffering from severe elbow tendonitis, specifically golfer's elbow? I just pushed through the pain. However, when I take time off, it doesn't seem to heal either. Any advice would be greatly appreciated. Um, golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, pretty much the same injury, overuse. Um, usually is caused by adhesion or scar tissue buildup in this area. And what's happening is instead of these muscles, sliding past each other the way they should they kind of stick together and you get this tendon in here gets rubbed you know it starts rubbing on the bone in there and you get a lot of inflammation and it starts out as tendonitis and then it can get worse because the tendon can start fraying and, and becoming weak um, the best solution believe it or not is art uh, uh, therapy and i've talked about this many times before in this show active release techniques um, what they do is they get in there with their fingers and they kind of apply pressure as you move your arm through its range of motion and they strip the adhesions away. And that restores the, the normal muscle tonicity and balance. And it will, it will usually take you out of pain you know, pretty quickly. Uh, obviously, if there's a lot of inflammation in the area, it might take a week or two for that to go down completely, but at least it's not gonna come back. So that's a, a great treatment. The best way, if you don't know of any ART guys in your, in your area, you could go to activereleasetechniques.com and you could put your zip code in and find a, a guy in your area. But, th but that's a tremendous technique and I think it's maybe underutilized in the bodybuilding world. Let's go to European team manager. Two part question. Dave, any thoughts regarding GABA and its effect on HE production and recovery, doses and timing? Also, your take on DMSO for soft tissue injuries, brain strain, soreness. I've been using it with Arnica and Emu oil with good results, but here it can cause liver issues. Yeah, let's talk about the GABA. I, I'm a big GABA fan. Um, I started using GABA like to go to sleep at night, two grams before bed and to, you know, for growth hormone release ostensibly. Uh, back in the early 90s when Bill Phillips kind of introduced it to the market, Paul D'Elia at um, uh, AST Research was selling it. He was the first guy selling. He came with like a little scooper and, and we started using it. And, and then GHB came around and everyone forgot about GABA and they started using GHB and people were getting high from it. You know, I was using it for sleep too and for GH release. GABA stimulates the GABA receptors in the brain. And when those GABA receptors are stimulated, it causes relaxation in the body. 
um, Valium, Xanax, drugs like that, Ativan, stimulate that GABA receptor too and cause that same relaxation. Um, as a side effect also, GABA seems to um, cause GH release at night. Now, how much? Probably very, very small amounts, but it's still, you know, it, it can't hurt. Um, I like GABA because it gives you a more restful night's sleep and it helps you fall asleep more easily, especially when you're on drugs like Trembolone that increase anxiety and stuff like that. It just relaxes the brain and allows you to just rest. Um, there's a product that I sell on DavePalumbo.com called Euphoria and it's, it's a bunch of different GABA metabolites mixed together. A friend of mine uh, formulated this years ago and I've been selling it ever since, my friend Brian Cunningham. And you do two scoops of that. As a matter of fact, I gave Big Lenny a bottle of it. He was asking about it. I gave him a bottle to try. Uh, because he needs to relax a little bit, you know, he has a, when he's on the high androgens, he doesn't, he doesn't sleep well, and he goes and stalks the neighbors. So I, I, you know, gave him a bottle. But yeah, you do two scoops of that. Um, just you could even do it when you're just home at night and relaxing, and it will completely relax you uh, because of that. Once again, the effect of these GABA metabolites on the GABA receptors in our brain. Uh, once again, probably a, an underutilized supplement in my mind. Go to Booby Bobby Trap Lord. Would you recommend calf and front delt injections? I am, um, you know, a lot of guys ask me, you know, how to enhance their calves, and calves usually require a lot of volume in, in there. Um, so I have guys use either the uh, Chris Clark Synthesize that I sell at DavePalumbo.com or the Painless Pumps that I sell there as well. Um, sometimes the Painless Pumps seem to be better because it, it doesn't really leave you sore. But the Chris Clark is, may be a little more effective, I don't know. Um, once again, they're both really good products. And once again, it's a volume issue, you know, so you want to put enough volume in, but you got to remember these, these site injection oils, because they actually have science behind them, these two particular brands, the longer you use it, okay, the more you're going to get permanent results and permanent muscle growth into the area. So, you know, once again, if people want to, you know, email me at huge285 at AOL.com, I'll send you the protocols of how to apply it. Um, that seems to work the best. Now, you know, for like front delts, you don't want to overload those with any kind of site injection oils because it's going to look really, it's going to look fake. And if you're getting up on a stage, you don't want the muscles to look fake. Because if they look fake, you're going to get marked down. It looks ridiculous. So you have to be a good artist. So less is better in the delts. Um, you can put a little bit in there and like, once again, I'll send you the protocol if you want, but, but it's, a, it's a much lesser amount in deltoids injections because we don't want them to look ridiculous. We know the guys up there who look ridiculous. We've made fun of them on our, plenty of our TV shows before. So there's good artists and bad artists. You know, that's why when you look at a Da Vinci or a Michelangelo painting, you're like, holy mackerel, this looks unbelievable. It looks just like the real thing. And then you look at other paintings and it kind of looks like, what the, what the hell did this guy learn his art? So same thing with applying these site injection oils. You're watching Ask Dave right now. Exclusive offer on speciesnutrition.com for Ask Dave viewers. Use the promo code AD25. That's Ask Dave 25, 25% off through Sunday nights. Go to Cato Vincentini. Dave, I'm from Brazil, and supplements here are way too expensive. I'm thinking about making my own pre workout product, planning on using arginine, AAKG, beta alanine, taurine, citrulline, malate. What do you think I should keep in my shake? Well, it seems like you got your bases covered. You know, if you want a little stimulation in there, put a little bit of caffeine in there or drink a cup of coffee with it. But uh, it sounds pretty good. I mean, beetroot extract, if you can get it over there, is, is another great uh, addition to a pre-workout. Anything that's going to cause nitric oxide production. You know, arginine, citrulline are good. Uh, agmatine, good. But they sometimes they don't stop working. You know, they're not continuously working. Beetroot extract, I think, because it's natural, tends to increase nitrates and, and nitric oxide levels at, at a more reliable rate. Um, obviously, the beta alanine is, is excellent in terms of uh, helping with muscle fatigue and, and reducing the acidity level inside the muscle when lactic acid builds up. So I, I think you can, you could, you know, pre-workouts is it's really a dose-related thing. You know, most pre-workouts on the market are just loaded with caffeine anyway or stimulants. They're not even they're not even using higher enough high enough amounts of these nitric oxide releasing compounds or these you know, beta alanine compounds. So you might even get better results making your own if those single ingredients are available. Old school, man, I hate this show more than Sergio Oliva hates classic physique. David on keto, do you recommend that you train the same way uh, as if you were on an off-season diet? Yeah, I, I wouldn't change uh, my plan much. You know, um, when you reduce carbs, obviously, pretty low, 
your endurance, your strength should be the same. Your endurance might be a little lower. So you certainly don't want to be in the gym for, you know, you know, an hour and a half to two hours. That's going to be a long time to be doing weights. I would try to get my weight training sessions done in anywhere from 60 to 75 minutes. Uh, you should be fine for that, and then and then go do your cardio. Cardio doesn't matter because you're you're in a depleted state anyway. You don't really. It doesn't matter if your you know your glycogen stores are low for that because we're burning body fat. So I think it's important uh, that you understand that you know you you're gonna your strength won't go down necessarily, but your endurance might. Apu Sharma eight twenty nine. Uh, da 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 da. Do you believe in metabolic adaptation and should someone increase their calories slowly over time to get into a place where the next cut is easier for them? I'm not really, I, I think you're, what you're saying is rather than, you know, when you're going on an off season mass building program, you don't want to throw too many calories in all at once. Um, you know, some people can handle that. Um, I was always the kind that can go pretty much almost back to eating my normal amount of food after a show. Some people, they, you know, their stomach has shrunk up, they just can't do it, or they've never eaten that much food. And so for those people, it might be better to gradually increase the food intake. I have guys I start out with and they're like, oh, Dave, I can't eat all this food. And I'm like, you know what? In a month, you'll be begging me for more food. And that's usually what happens. So we, we, we cut back their food a little bit and then I build them up. Um, so it all depends on the person. You know, once again, I'm, I'm the kind of person I want to get started right away. So if I can get, if I can get all that food in quickly, then great. If, if it's just too much for me because I'm not used to eating that much, then we'll gradually build them up. That's all. Haley, or rather 807 Haley, for a bikini competitor, how many calories should be added in each week post-show from which macronutrients to avoid post-competition rebound? The only way you're going to get a post-competition rebound is if you eat like a slob, okay? So, you know, what I usually do is, you know, I figure out how much protein a, a girl needs. If she's 100, you know, 20 pounds, you know, maybe I'll give her 160 grams of protein a day. Um, I'll figure out how much fat, which is if she's, once again, if she's 120 pounds, she probably needs about 60, 70 grams of fat. And then I'll figure, and then I'll guess on carbs. You know, maybe I'll start her off on, you know, 100 grams of carbs a day and see how she does. If she's gaining too much weight, I'll cut her back. If she's not gaining quick enough, I'll increase the carbs. But the protein and fat is pretty in, in stone what you pretty much need. It's, it's kind of done, protein's about a gram to a gram and a half per pound. Fat's about half a gram for females per pound that they weigh, and then everything else is carbs. So, once again, you don't really need to do that much, you know, crazy configuring. Uh, get the protein and fat down, start her on some carbs, and then increase them gradually and figure out what, what she needs to start to gain, but not gain too fast. So, in other words, if I'm giving a certain, you know, carb amount and the, the girl's putting on four or five pounds a week, that's too much, obviously. If I'm, putting on, if I'm putting on a certain fat and she's losing weight every week, then I'm not giving her enough. Or if she's not gaining weight, I'm not giving her enough and I got to increase them a little bit. And usually at that point, I'll increase it by about five to seven grams per meal uh, that she's eating carbs. So once again, it, it, it's, it's a gradual process. You just, you, it's like you're trying to like perfectly figure out the right balance so that the seesaw doesn't go this way, it doesn't go this way, it kind of stays even. And that's just trial and error. Physique 85, Dave, out of all your interviews, live wits, et cetera, who has been your most memorable or favorite personality so far? Big Lenny. No, I don't know. I, yeah, I, there were so many great ones. You know, I, I loved interviewing um, Jay Cutler. That was a great interview, I thought. Uh, I loved interviewing Triple H, of course. I loved the, all the Lou Ferrigno interviews I love. Uh, Jason Ha probably is probably, one of the most memorable is Jason Ha. I think everyone remembers that one. After he won the USA Championships, he was like 14 different magazines were trying to like sign him and, and, and I couldn't get this freaking guy to commit to an interview and I was very good friends with him. I had done his diet in the past before and we knew each other. And I, I, just, I just was dr driving him crazy in the lobby. I said he wanted to do it later. I said, no, we got to do it right now. You just got off stage. He put his trophy down right in the lobby at the USA Championships, and I interviewed him, and I got him to cry on camera. And that's probably very memorable because I love to see people release emotion that's inside of them and uh, and, and be real. And that was a really a real interview. But like I said, I, I've had some so many fun interviews over the years. I don't even remember them all, to be honest with you. Um, but Big Lenny was good. It was a good interview. You know, uh, I could probably see myself doing a lot more with him because he's so brutally honest. The best interviews are with people who are, are willing to bear their soul for you. Let's go to Sultana of Pista. I've been experimenting with salt this off season and I'm having the crazier, craziest pumps. Here's what I do. No salt on all meals of the day except for my pre-workout meal. 
in which I add one gram of salt, then two hours later, one more gram of salt, my intra-workout shake. The pumps are crazy, and for some reason, my body seems to be getting rid of the excess water. My skin is tighter. I wanted to know if you've ever tried something like that, and what are your thoughts on what I'm trying? Well, I'm a big believer in, in, in taking in a lot of sodium, um, unless you have a severe blood pressure problem and you're on meds for it. But I'm a big believer in high sodium, so I don't think that you're the technique of doing it over around certain meals of the day is doing anything for you other than you know you know tricking up your body. I would eat I would eat high sodium all day long. I mean uh, I mean Stan Efferding and I were talking about this. He's a big believer in in, in high sodium, especially for powerlifting, because it makes you stronger. Obviously, because you want it. Remember every like percentage point that you're dehydrated or that you're sodium depleted will will cost you strength and performance. So for for athletes like strength athletes and and track athletes. If you're, if you're dehydrated or you're electrolyte depleted, you're not going to perform as well. Uh, bodybuilders don't realize this because for some reason we equate eating salt with being fat. I don't know where this ever came from, but it's, it's a delusional idea um, because people think, well, if they're holding water and they don't look as hard, then they must be fat. And that's just not the case. So I think what you're doing is, is good in the sense that you're adding salt to your diet, but you should be adding salt to all your meals. There's no reason why certain meals have salt. It's not... It's not like there's not like a special window that your body can absorb sodium better before you, you weight train other than rather than in the morning or before you go to bed. So I would just you know eat as I just have people salt their meals and eat as much as they want during the day. Doesn't mean you have to overdo it, but it means you should definitely salt your meals. You shouldn't go without it. Howard Nine, are switching to prop and ace esters really that important as to holding water before a show? What's the big deal with 5% more water retention when you're going to run diuretics to get rid of the water anyways? You just answered your own question, and that's exactly what I was going to say. There is no reason to, to go on these short-acting esters. I, trenbolone acetate, even though it's short-acting, it's, it's not the fact that it's short-acting that people use it. It's just a very potent drug. It makes you really uh, hold a lot of glycogen in the muscle, so the muscles look harder and denser. It gives you aggression in the gym, so you train harder. Um, that's really why people use trend acetate. Um, the, the truth of the matter is, and I've said this a million times before, you could take testosterone enanthate, which is the, long acting, the longest acting ester uh, available with probably growth hormone and, and get ready for a show and you'll probably look just as good as if you took trend acetate and you took uh, test propionate and all these other you know, drugs that people associate with pre-contest you know, uh, preparations. Steroids and steroids, they kind of all work the same. You know, some do certain things. I like to stack them because together, different anabolics kind of amplify each other. But this short-acting, long-acting thing is, is overrated because like you said, at the end, you're doing some water restriction, you're doing some diuretics to dry yourself out anyway. So it, it's, it's a really not an issue. Now, if, if, they were, if, if all diuretics disappear tomorrow and no one can use them again, that's a different story. Now we might be sitting down and saying, well, which drugs hold less water because it's going to be easier to dry the person out. But that's not the case, so th there's no reason to be you know, playing with this minutia. You're, asking, you're watching Ask Dave on RxMuscle.com. Reminder, right now on RxMuscle.com and the YouTube channel, our interview, part one interview with Big Lenny, of course, our, our episode of Iron Rage with IAPB Pro Jeff Long and Lee Priest, people abusing GoFundMe. And then, of course, our special on SpeciesNutrition.com. Use the promo code AD25. That's AD for Ask Dave. AD25. 25% off good through Sunday nights. Go to KFarley41. First time somebody's actually asked this question. I'm surprised it's taking this long to get to this uh, topic. Weightlifting shoes. Do you recommend them? What are your thoughts on weightlifting shoes? Thinking of purchasing a pair due to my squat number getting high currently at 405 over the past months. Weightlifting shoes to me don't, there's, there's nothing special about them. They used to have these crazy shoes. They were like, they were like higher in the front and they, so you're like, your rear foot was like off the ground and they're supposed to help you build calves better. <laughs> I don't think they ever worked. I think they just gave people like strains in their, in their lower legs. But yeah, I mean, I use a cross trainer type shoe. Uh, I like. I used to like Nike Shocks. I don't think they make them anymore, to tell you the truth. But I use a Nike shoe. Uh, those usually fit my feet pretty good. What I try to look for, and this is something you might want to, you know, keep your eye out for. I noticed a lot of basketball shoes now, rather than the shoe sitting, you know, higher. Excuse me, higher in the back. If here's your heel, they're sitting like this now. So like your the heel is like lower than the front, and I don't. I notice when I wear those type of shoes, I get really weird strains in my knees, and I don't, I don't, it doesn't feel good. 
you need arch support. So you, you want to get the shoes that are higher in the back. That's why I used to like the shocks because they had a nice you know, high lift in the back. Um, stay away from flat shoes that are too flat and stay away from shoes, once again, that are, are lower than, than they are high in the back. So to me, that, that's the best shoe to wear. Um, you definitely want something with support. I see these guys you know, squatting in these, those, those five finger shoes. They have very little support there. To me, that's not a good idea. Once again, when you're squatting and doing legs, you want to be able to put it, first of all, you want to put an orthotic in your shoes that's going to hold your arch support uh, so, so that your, your feet are in the right position. Because remember, the biomechanics of your feet will dictate how the rest of your body is lifting the weight. Because if the weight is distributed wrong on your feet, it's going to torque your knees, it's going to torque your lower back, you're going to have problems okay, down the road, overuse injuries. So you want your biomechanics of your body to be the best they can be. That means a good support shoe, a little higher in the back, and a custom orthotic in there. Now they got these things, you know, I, I like to go to a, a chiropractor or a podiatrist and have them custom fit me for my orthotics, which are my inserts and my shoes. But, you know, you could actually go now to Walmart and I see they have these things where, like, I don't know if it's Dr. Scholl's, where they actually, you, you just kind of stand on a machine and it tells you which orthotics you know, to buy for your shoes. They're a little less expensive if you can't afford custom ones, uh, but they're better than nothing. Dave, oh dude, your thoughts on shooting painless pumps during peak week? You know, if you don't use a site injection oil like a painless pumps or, or, or uh, Chris Clark synthesized, like the whole, like, you know, for a couple weeks before a show, I don't know if I would just all of a sudden start using it the week of the show. Probably not a good idea because who knows how your body's going to respond to it. If you've been using it for a couple weeks and you tolerate it well, you could probably pretty much, if you have a Saturday morning show, you could probably use, you could probably do your triceps up until Thursday morning and your biceps up to Wednesday morning. That's usually what I used to do and what you know, I recommend a lot of people do. Calves probably also Wednesday, you know, would be the last time you do it because you want to give the muscle some time, that, that, that swelling, a little time to go down. Uh, obviously, when you're taking diuretics and you're restricting fluid, it's going to get rid of that, that extra fluid anyway. But I wouldn't like do it the day before the show. Uh, that, that, that could be dangerous. Once again, you never want to do anything like a day or two right before a show because you can always get a bad shot. Things can go wrong. And you don't want to screw up your whole 16-week contest diet because you did something ridiculous the day before uh, you get on stage. Protein Kings, Dave, uh, uh, any tips for lean bulking with a desk job, so I guess office job, how can I minimize fat gain while trying to gain muscle? I have a desk job requiring me to sit eight to 10 hours a day. Your thoughts? Get up, stand up, stretch around, lean over. I do that all day long, because I'm, I'm at a, either at this anchor desk or I'm at my computer desk all day long, and you get tight. The lower back, I get, it feels like someone's like squeezing like my lower back. I get all bound up. I go to the chiropractor once a week, also to try to loosen that up and they're like, whoa, you're tight. And I'm like, yeah, I, don't, I think it's just from sitting all day long. And I, you know, I try to move around when I get out of here, but you know, that sitting in that one position kind of starts cementing your lower back into that. So try to move around, try to stretch out. You know, you, you're, I'm sure you're allowed to go to the bathroom at work. I know it looks ridiculous when you go into a bathroom and do stretches in the mirror there, but I do it. I get up and I stretch because, you know, otherwise I, I feel like uh, I'm 90 years old. And that's just a fact. You know, if you're at a desk all day long, get up and move around. Mike Pachulski, should you train to failure every set? Um, you know, not every set is, is a set that's going to build muscle. You know, when you get into the gym and you start doing bench presses, you don't start off with 405, you know, for reps. You're starting out with one plate, two plates. You're building up to try to loosen up. At that point, those sets are not to failure. So the last working set where you're using your heaviest weight, that's your working set. That's what you want to push to failure on. So yeah, if I'm, if my, let's say my max is 405 on the bench. When I get to 405, let's say I can do five reps. You know, I want to try to get that five reps and I might have my training partner help me push a sixth rep out. That to me is training to failure, you know, and that, that's pushing. So the next time I come back into the gym, the sixth rep might go up a lot easier now because I'm used to it and my body's growing and responding and my strength is increasing. So yeah, it's not every set and every rep is to failure, but your working sets, the ones that you know are building muscle, the heaviest sets, those are the ones you really want to go all out on. Paul Falbo, what are a few of your favorite exercises for side delts and how many sets reps do you do for side delts during your shoulder routine? I usually do three sets of the side lateral machine, which is that machine you sit on and they put the pads on your elbow and you kind of just lift up. 
I like that machine and I do it unilaterally, one arm at a time, because you can't cheat. Remember, if the pad's on here, you can't, you're not using your hands. So the only thing that you're using is, is this side delt. So I like doing that machine for like three, sometimes four, four sets. Um, then I'll do, I usually get my arm behind the thing, the pad, and I'll pull back for rear delts. I'll do some front raises, you know. When I get my other shoulder done, I'll be doing some shoulder presses, obviously, in there as well. Um, but I think that seated side lateral machine, doing unilateral movements one at a time, is probably the most potent at building thickness on those side medial deltoid heads. How about this? Big Lenny has a question oh, on really? his show. Here we go. So keep up. Is it easier to build the upper body if you have the lower body if you don't have the lower body is it easier to build the upper body I I always had a bigger upper lower body I should say and it was I found it was hard to build my upper body and you know everyone's like oh don't train your legs I'm like well why would I not train my best body part and make it a weaker body part I'm just gonna bring my upper body up and and that's what I did you know and um, I find that when you have a weaker body part a lot of times people make the mistake of training it more frequently oh, I have weak legs, I'll train them two times, three times a week, I'll make it grow, I have a weaker back. I'll, that's the stupidest thing, okay? Because when you overtrain a muscle, okay, it's certainly not gonna get bigger because it's never having time to recover. So I think when people have a weaker body part, assuming you're training it right, because some, a lot of times people just don't train the muscle right, they don't really feel it working, they're just going through the motions. Assuming you're training it right and you're still not growing, Take more time off. Instead of training your body part once every seven days, train it once every eight days or nine days. But really hit it hard when you do it on those days. Giving it that extra rest is going to give you the ability to, to grow. But it's usually, the reason people have weak body parts is it's twofold, it's, well threefold. Number one, genetic usually problem. Number two, they're just not training it right and they're not feeling it in the gym. And number two, three, they're not giving it adequate recovery. So these are the three top areas you must address to bring them up. Now, uh, in Big Lenny's case, he was telling me, you know, I, I noticed he wasn't doing full rep or full range on his squats. He was trying to just push up heavy weight, and Lenny wasn't going all the way down and, and bringing, engaging those adductor muscles in his inner thighs and those glutes and everything like that. He was kind of just, you know, engaging the, the, uh, the top part of his legs. And once again, leg development is all about complete uh, and full range of motion. And, you know, sometimes opening up your foot stance helps you come all the way down because you're stronger that way. Take one more from your client in Argentina, Hernan. Uh, you're all over the world. My question is, what do you think about silicon dioxide? Seems to be very beneficial, even if you're on cycle, to get rid of toxins from the intestine, liver, kidneys, etc. I don't know if it might hinder steroids power since it tries to absorb and eliminate anything floating around the organism, potentially toxic. Silicone dioxide, never heard of that uh, being used as a detoxification agent. I've never used it personally. Um, I, I wouldn't even have, you know, sometimes I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, you know, it sounds a little controversial. I've never heard of anyone using it. Doesn't mean that it can't work, but um, it sounds a little unusual. Um, I, like I said, I haven't really heard much of, in the way of research in detoxifying the body that way. Um, I don't even know what it would pull out of your body, to be honest with you. Uh, money and weight stays when it comes to PCT and hormonal fluctuations. What are some of the steps that, be, that can be taken to decrease the likelihood of acne? You know, ac acne that occurs when you come off a cycle, which seems like it's illogical. Why, why would you get acne when you come off the cycle when the cycle usually causes the acne? Well, the problem is when you come off a cycle, your hormones are all over the place. They're up, they're down, they're up, they're down. And it's uh, that hormonal fluctuation that causes the breakouts. Um, look at a woman around her period of time, they a lot of times get really bad breakouts and that's because estrogen is spiked and then it's low and progesterone is spiked and then it's low. So these, these hormonal fluctuations cause breakouts for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the mechanism that is, but it, it just happens. So when you come off, you know, what you want to do is really manage your DHT levels without lowering them into the toilet bowl. So I have a lot, of, I have all my clients when they come off using my uh, Testalyze product at three pills twice a day, which will balance your testosterone, estrogen, and DHT without suppressing estrogen and DHT too much. And that's the key, balance them, okay? And that's gonna raise your natural serum testosterone level. So once again, sometimes it's not all about extremes. It's about getting the right levels and uh, not knocking things down too low. So instead of this going on in the body, 
when you come off, hormonally speaking, we get more of this. And when we get this, we get less breakouts. We're getting a bunch of questions from India. They're wondering when you're going to bring your uh, diet guru class to India. Um, Sid is going to be, I'm sending Sid over there. He's going to be teaching the uh, secrets to becoming a diet guru class for the Pakistani Indian uh, bodybuilding contingency. <laughs> I don't know. Someone's got to bring me over there and make it worth my while financially because the last time I was over there, I, uh, I wound up tearing my quad and I'm still dealing with it since 2012. So you're going to have to really sweeten the pot to get me to come over there and, uh, and teach this course. <laughs> Finally, Super Bowl Sunday, New England, Philadelphia, who do you have? You know what? I hate New England Patriots because I'm a, giant, I'm a diehard Giant, you know, New York Giant fan. Um, we always hate the Patriots. We hate everything in Boston, right? We don't like the Boston Red Sox. We don't like the New England Patriots. But you know what? I think that, that Brady's got some kind of like uh, hot streak going. He's 40 years old. The guy plays like he's in his 20s. I, I don't think he can be beat. I really think that he's going to win the Super Bowl, even though I, I, I'd love to see the Philadelphia Eagles win. All right. On that note, that is going to do it for this episode of Ask Dave, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Again, go to speciesnutrition.com right now. Special exclusive for Ask Dave viewers, AD25, 25% off. Store-wide deal is good through Sunday night. Again, the Big Lenny interview is live right now on RxMuscle.com and the Rx Muscle YouTube channel. For Dave Palumbo and our producer, Tyler Shore, I'm Sadiq Farouki. We'll see you next time.